our next topic is going to be my topic real quick. Rocco, how long do we have you? I'm on right now until um, I'm in a month. Okay, that was, <laughs> we, all right, we got you. <laughs> we got you. I'm going I'm I'm to be here as long as I can. I don't know how long that is, to be honest. Okay, well, when does the game start? The game starts at 11, but I'm going to still try to stay uh, with you guys. Don't like know. in and out. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, okay. Um, my work. topic is uh, Clay loves Dark Souls. Ooh, is okay. that simple? Um, I hated on this game for a little bit. <clears throat> oh yeah, you guys dogged me about it. I dog. Yeah, I think I did dog. I think in, I would hope that you got that in jest because here's the thing. <laughs> oh no, of course. Yeah. Okay, because like I definitely, I definitely have my problems. Like it, I like when I, okay, let's see. How do I? There's so much there. I've tried playing this game six times and rage quit all the times, and so that <laughs> led me to the to the thing where I recognize people really like this game, and I recognize that people really think that this game is great and that it's for them, and I came to the conclusion that this game was not good for me, and I came to the conclusion that I felt like this was like some shoddy game design. Like I felt like they were just trying to be difficult for the sake of difficult, although I heard plenty of people be like, no, nah, man, you just got to learn how it's done, and then it feels really fair, and I was like, I guess, and I was like, I just... Man, I just this game's not for me. I don't have time to sit there and grind and die over and over and over again. I just don't. Uh, I have a life. I have a wife. I have a. Yeah. I have a baby. Like I just I, I can't make this work. And then uh, after like a seventh and eighth time rage quitting, I was watching Game Grumps play Dark Souls three, and I was like, this just looks like a fun game. He's making it look easy. <laughs> if I can make, if I can do it like they're doing it easy, then I will play this game. So I picked up Dark Souls one more time. And I decided I was just going to follow a guide, a YouTube yeah. guide, and pound for pound. And then uh, that was it. That's all it took. I started playing, and it was just awesome. It was super, super fun. Uh, it was uh, – it was – So what was the difference, though? Like what, what, what was the difference there for you? With having a guide now versus you just going out there and doing it, like the, what diff was the, the difference was. I've never played the game though with that coming in mind too. Right, so and and that's I've the problem, played. and that's what. And so the, explain and, it to the viewers who haven't played that either. Right, and so he, here's the thing I realized is that when I've ever talked to someone, they're like, "No, Dark Souls is great, blah blah blah. I did this, I did that." And I was like, "Well, how did far did you get? Oh, I got this. You got to get this, blah blah." I was like, "Well, that's crazy." And like, and I was like, "You did this, you?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, it's so easy. I beat this, blah blah." I'm like, "Okay, fine." When people don't tell you. Is that they're actually looking at guides too, and going on YouTube uh, and finding people and oh, talking yeah. to people, but no one says that, or no one even has ever suggested that I well, do that. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I I agree with you one hundred percent. But what I do is I play it, and if I get stuck at a spot, I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out, and I'll go to my computer. I'm like, oh, that's how you do it, and then you get past it, and then you go on and go on. And now the fairness of the game that you you had mentioned is a great thing. So. All games and everything that we always play, you sit there and you play a character or you're, you're someone or something that you could sit there and you shoot something or you hit something twice and it's dead, but you get hit 50 fucking times and you're still alive and you s escape somehow. This game is extremely fair. You pretty much have the same amount of life as the person you're about to – or the mob you're about to fight, and you could instantly die. Like out of nowhere, and there's tricks and and a lot of games. Like if you're running along a ledge, you can't fall off because the whole game just says, "Hey, there's a wall, an invisible wall here." No, this game's like, "Hey, don't go near that fucking ledge, or you're gonna fall off." <laughs> and then on on top of that too, though, like again, we're used to. I'm used to games that like you you don't go to the guides. Like we've been conditioned to be like, "No, you're not gonna need a guide. You just need to press forward." And I didn't get that. As soon so the guide opens me up to how you're supposed to do stuff then and things create things yeah and but so hold on a second though my question my question is this then is it like is it that difficult that you really can't figure figure yes. out that puzzle yeah that's it's what's not so even a puzzle. So, so is that so is that fair to like i mean i know it's not no a puzzle, no no it still that's... is a puzzle like it's still a problem that you gotta no no of course like, so, this, yeah. so this was the yeah. connection that blew my mind because it's hard to it's a hard concept to grasp rocco as you're doing right now you're like wait hold on so you're telling yeah, me i'm because, trying to figure it out yeah. right because it, and that's how this game is made. It's made in an age of community, and it knows this because they have messages that you can drop down that you're supposed uh, to read. Gotcha. On top of that, there's Reddits gotcha. and community forums and YouTube. Like they knew that this was going to be using social media. Spe yeah, specifically it's supposed to be the, yeah for communication. Gotcha. And so, and if you have, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say go once on. once you realize that this game. Like, you shouldn't feel guilty or bad like you normally would in this game culture for going yeah. out and grabbing. Like, I mean, how many times have it was like, It feels oh, like you're, you're cheating. Yes, you're like, exactly. It feels like you're cheating, yeah. yeah. Exactly, because, like, how many times have you been like, oh, you used the guide? I didn't use the guide yeah. in that game. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. this game needs a – you need a guide. 
And there are oh, yeah. some people gotcha. that have the time to, but like it's really the mass. Pe most people do not play the game where they just try to figure everything out by themselves. It's really hard to. It's it's not meant to be. Yeah. What I want you to do is the next one that comes out. I want you to get it right when it comes out because the wiki is amazing. Because you'll see like. The only just the first stage, like the first few days, and then the second stage, and everyone's talking about it. Because not only that, it is huge about community because you get to a last boss and you're like, oh my god, I've tried to fight this guy 15 times and I have gotten so close, can't do it. You could sit there and throw down a sign or summon someone to help you kill that boss. Mm -hmm. So, Rocco, you're having problems. You're like, I need help on this. I jump on, I throw down my sign, you summon me, and we both kill it together. Even though I probably passed that stage or something like that. So mm. there's a huge community, like you said, and uh, I, I absolutely, I'm one of those advocates. I think it's that so that's, whole so, so how design. They, how, yeah. yes. so, they, so, so they have to make it, they, so to do that, to build it into a community, they did, they did what? They made this game just difficult. Very difficult. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, how they you that. need you need to people talk to, to multiple people. For that. You, yeah, like they, like this is old school. Like they, they they did it like old school Zelda, where like you didn't have like even yeah. back when you didn't have the internet, you're talking to other gamers and being like, dude, I don't know how to get to the seventh dungeon. It's like, oh, yeah, I do because I accidentally found this item that I had no idea how yeah. I did, but I did find this item. So if you can figure out how to find that item again, that's what allowed me to go in this. Oh, cool. Talk to yeah. another guy. I know how to get that item because I yeah. was paying attention when I did. Oh, okay. So now I know what to do. And that's how you progress. That's on. pretty cool, man. That's actually right. pretty well, cool. But if you don't know that, yeah. if you think this is supposed to be a traditional game where you're just supposed to beat your head against the wall and play, like you're going to go insane and you're going to rage quit like I did. But once you don't feel guilty and realize, oh, I do need a guide to play this game, you're fucking set and it's amazing. Well, think about this. Remember when I put that that one how to get to the the, the triple crossbow thing, right. and it got a um, crap ton of hits. Yeah. Because yeah. it was kind of new game and stuff, and I stumbled upon a path. I was like, "Hey, what's this way gonna get me?" Right. And I was like, "Holy shit, that's how you kill that thing!" And yeah. and people were uh, looking at it, commenting. So it is great community. And the other thing is, is like the items and the graphics are great, but the items are insane. Because think about this. There's items out there that you can get that you can turn into another item, but there's no, oh, hey, to get this item, you have to get X, Y, and Z. No, right. it's it just. doesn't tell you that. Yeah, you just go, oh, holy shit, how am I. So, you either stumble upon it or read the guide. So that's the other thing I noticed is that, and this is something, Rocco, that might be hard to grasp. Like, it was hard for me um, because you get souls when you kill things. And you use souls to level up. That's one, that's one thing to use with these. Now, traditionally, when you play, you're like, oh, if I'm losing, I just need to level up. So I'll just grind a bunch for souls, and then I'll, I'll level up in my strength or my dexterity. But that's actually not really the first thing well, you should do. Souls, no. if you look at souls as a resource to buy items, that's the best way to progress, right? Buying items gets you to different locations in the game that have the ability to find the items you need to progress. Like, it's about... When you hit a challenge, what item do I need as opposed to I need to be higher level? Now, there's some instances that higher level makes this really good, but people, have, but to solidify my point, people have beaten this game at level one because they've just found the correct items. So it's more about Legend of Zelda in the sense that, oh, I don't have the hook shot to get to this point or to hit this guy in his weakness. I can't progress, right? But the fact that Legend of Zelda doesn't have a conflicting concept of leveling up, you never have to worry about, oh, is do I just need to level up? Is that what I need to do? No, I need to get the right item for this like place. And so once that concept like solidified in my mind, like the game opened up and blew my. I was like, oh my god, soul packets are the, are the souls that I really should probably use for leveling up. But any souls I get while playing the game or beating a boss should really be used. At like leveling up pyromancy, getting like titanite chunks to get items to be strong. Like it's it's oh, more yeah, about yeah. an item game than it is about leveling up game, and that was a th hard thing for me to get past as well. So like there was a ton of layers here that slowly started peeling off as I'm playing this guide, and the game just like my third eye had opened, <laughs> and I realized how this game is supposed to be played, and it's a beautiful, beautiful game. And I was like, this is great. This is so much fun. Good. I'm glad that like. I, I, I preached it forever, and I, yeah. I remember the funniest thing is that my brother found this game. And my brother's a big gamer. You know, David Fry, we all know. Yeah, um, yeah. David Fry, rest in peace. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It just felt like a really good thing to say. I don't know the honor. It just felt right. Yeah, it, but he's not dead. It did. It he's did. awesome. <laughs> Thank you, David Fry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he told me about it when the first one came Thank out. You, he's like, 
and he's like, he's like, you got to check this game out. He's like, it is insanely difficult. And <laughs> I fell in love it with it from day one yeah. because I got so frustrated. And I was like, I need to figure out how to beat this. You know, I, I'm one of those people like, I can't let that go. I can't. There are games that I'm just like, yeah, whatever. But if it's getting the best of me, yeah. I have to sit there and go, how? There, there's no way that right. I can't just get past this guy. It's the first stage, and there's a guy over there on the left that I can't kill. There's some way. Yeah, Come yeah. to fucking find out in the first game, you're not supposed to kill that guy until almost the end of the whole game. Yeah. 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 And I so, was like, I was like, you guys are dicks. You know, and I was just thinking of that. <laughs> Especially Dark Souls 1, it has this Castlevania yeah. feeling, this Metroid feeling, if you're familiar with that, right. Rocco, in which that you can um, – yeah. you basically start – defeating things and getting things and unlocking things that open up shortcuts to yeah. new areas and so you come back to old areas now with a shortcut and you can get to places you couldn't um it definitely has an mmo feeling you get to places and you die and you're like why did i die and it's a lot more obscure than just their higher level right because it says it on their, their fucking thing it's actually because you need a ring to walk in that area or else you're going to be really slow but it's really hard to put those pieces or you together get places if, if, yeah <laughs> That you if you don't know anything. Yeah, and yeah. so it definitely gives you this sense of, like, when you first played WoW, and you're like, whoa, I am not supposed to be in this area. You know what but I mean? It's, I that's very exciting. that feeling. Yes. Yeah, yes. no, I know, and that's why like, it's such a good... Because you're so... Because the world is, like, you're walking into it the way I think we're supposed to be doing always anyways. Right. And, like, in this world, too, with an I don't know mentality. Right. Like, I have no fucking clue what's going to happen here, and I don't know why I died, yeah. and what I'm supposed to do... And now I got to figure out this big ass puzzle. And if I don't, and, and that does create community because a lot of the community, even in those environments, were helping out and assisting. Yep. And then, you know, because it, because it was an MMO. This one's right. not yeah. an MMO though, right? But it's I mean, played like. It's, yeah, I guess like, you could gear it towards that. It, it, there's like, there's co-op. You can summon people yeah. to help you that oh, know okay. what they're doing. Gotcha. Um, you can summon up to two people. People can invade you while you're playing and kill you. That's one of the really cool parts. And too. you can invade other people. So there definitely is a PvP, <clears throat> co-op, PvE aspect that MMOs share, but there's certainly not a bunch of people running around, which in a lot of ways make it, makes it better. Like, it allows for the game designers to make a more linear experience. So you, you get the best of both worlds. Um, well... And you said linear, but if you really think about it, this game has so many different paths. Mm. It's not too linear because I mean, honestly, you, I mean, you have next game stuff. That's crafted, well crafted. Like, oh, you don't okay. have to worry about well, what happens if two people or if someone does this before you. Like you don't have to worry okay. about that. Um, well, but th there's different aspects of it. Like oh, if hey, if you do this or help this person in their mini quest, if you do it, but not if somebody yeah. else does it. Right, right. And that's that's but, just what I meant by linear. Like, and you the have to actually play for you is is straight. There's nothing that gets. Sorry, it's fine. And and, uh, and the experience also is you have to play next yes. game, which is after you beat the game, you start back over from square one, but everything's strong. Yeah. Because you physically or there's not enough resources in the game to get everything the first time around. And not only that, there's items that you need multiple things to be able to get. Like this crazy, badass, huge, like, stone sword. You need two of these souls to be able to do this. And it, uh, I just yeah, like cool. that kind of concept as well. Here's the other thing I want to touch on before we move on to our next topic. Is yeah. the lore of Dark Souls. This lore is amazing, Rocco. I'm talking Game of Thrones. And it, and it all gets explained while playing, right? No. I, it's... it's it is explained oh. through the items and through like suggestive and like it's all show don't tell. Like the only tell is like the opening yeah. credits of the game and the end credits of the game. And even then That's it's it. so vague as to what is happening. So I wanted to take a shot as it, at explaining the lore a little bit. Um, can, can I say something real quick though yeah. before you get into that explanation? Is that even what you do during the game, you can alter the ending. So there's probably, I think in the last one there's like four or I think four different endings that you can actually have as well. And there's hidden worlds too. Like there's places that people find out like after a while, like, holy shit, I didn't know if I, I, that monster, I got into the back of his cage. He's going to take me to this other fucking area that I never even knew about. Yeah. You know, just something of that sort, but go on with your explanation. So, so I'm just going to, I know this might be kind of, um, I will link, I will do my best to remember to link to the place that you should watch because this guy has like a David Attenborough voice with beautiful Dark Souls like music uh, in nope. the background as he's explaining stuff. Rock, are you still with us? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry so about here that. you go. So Dark Souls history part one, we have the age of the ancients, right? Nothing but gray crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. Nothing changed, nothing progression. It's just like, it's this like perfect early uh, time, right? Uh, 
Okay. And then, so living below the dragons were a race of humanoids who probably are a much younger species. They're like these giant people, giant humanoids, very, very large people. Although their actual size seems to vary um, on their power and perhaps their own choice, right? So they're living right. below the dragons. Uh, how advanced this race was is unknown, but I think that they were very developed or powerful until they, f they weren't very powerful until they found the first flame. So fire was, was found and the flame contained, this is... <laughs> the flame contained Lord Souls. Powerful souls that, for like um, members of the giants, took to the cells, which made them essentially gods. So these first four people were Nido, the first of the dead, who found the death soul. You had the witch of Isolith, who found the life soul. Sorry, I have some. I have noise in the background. One second. It's all good. Uh, okay, and then you have the light soul, which was found by Lord Gwen, and then you have the uh, uh, furtive. A pygmy who found the dark soul so you have these four souls that represent different aspects of life and stuff like that uh and they were shaped by their owners uh or perhaps the it shaped them right it's hard to say uh and then they each gave like them a different attribute right life and death light and dark each of these were things that granted to the world by fire and the world above the world of dragons was stagnant nothing changed nothing happened nothing died nothing truly lived just existed right so then you have the age of fire now that the souls have been found uh, so the giants found new power allowed them to wage a war against these dragons, right? They were like kind of Set to like this bottom place and now they were able to like have the power to to live up top uh, That they wanted to right so but unfortunately for them the dragons were truly immortal and they couldn't be damaged Except for this one dragon whose name Seath the scaleless He was uh, he was born with like no scales like the dragons were and he was like he was mocked teased He was casted out by the other dragons and because of that he holds like a really like strong grudge against them and so he aligned himself with these giants and told the the giants the weakness of dragons, which was lightning. Um, <laughs> what's that? This is, really likes it. this is this is this is he's loving this topic. Lord, yeah, he's, he's like this, this is amazing. Um, Tell me more, Dad. <laughs> yeah. So using this knowledge, Gwen, the the guy who had the light soul. Uh, uh, he, him and his knights stripped the dragons of their stone scales with powerful spears of lightning, uh, which made the war a lot uh, more even-sided. And then Goff, his like brother, I think, says, uh, we knights fought violently, uh, but for every one of them, we lost three score of our own. So it was, it was a brutal fight to like gain, like, Very cool. right? Um, so three of them fought dragons, the Witch of Isolith, uh, Isolith and her daughters of Chaos used the now forgotten fire sorcery to attack them and burn their homes, the arch trees. Uh, Nido, the, the dead uh, lord, uses his own power of death and decay in much the same way, and their allegiance with Gwen served their needs, and eventually the dragons were no more. So they killed all the dragons. The pygmy was doing is kind of unknown. You don't know. He, we think he was like he was um, creating humans and giving them each a piece of his dark soul because there's this idea that these lord souls can be breaking apart a little bit and given to people, which, which kind of happens, but each lord does it in their own way, right? Um, and so you have the Age of Fire, which was a period of prosperity for the giants. Many of them lived with uh, the crate grags of the dragons and up into the arch trees. Um, so let's see. So Gwen built uh, his home atop a mountain uh, to be close to the sunlight, and it was called uh, Arno Lend Londo. And the witch and her family and her followers stayed underground in the city of Isolith, what is known as the Demon Ruins. Uh, now it would have to be like the suburbs of the Isolith at the time. Uh, Nido probably, he kept... Um, from Gwen and the Witch, he's a bit of a mystery, the first of the dead, so he was probably off on his own. Like, basically, all the lords split into do their own thing. Seath, the scaleless dragon, since he helped the giants, was named Duke uh, of Honorlando by Gwen. Gwen is like this new king of the world now, and Seath was allowed to continue his experiments, and so he was <coughs> granted access to this library, and so he just starts, like, he just starts, like, creating all this, like, new stuff and experimenting with things and has, like, all these, like, different... Uh, kooky stuff right why the pygmy is interesting uh were suggested that uh he was like guilty or nervous um perhaps because he was smaller or weaker than giants so he spent his time keeping out of the way and the power of the dark soul has changed that though it is assumed to be where humanity came from both the ghostly black soul and humans themselves the pygmy is considered to be a precursor to the human race smaller and weaker than the giants but with the unique power of humanity right so they can die and like that humanity can like uh give them the power to come back uh, so um, yeah, I, I was just gonna jump in here. Is this all the games that they're talking about, or is this it is just Dark Souls One? <clears throat> one, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I was trying to remember all this stuff, but I mean, because quite honestly, there's Dark Souls, there's Demon Souls, there's yeah. Bloodborne, and now they're coming out with another game, which I'll tell you afterwards. Just yeah. wanted to kind of wonder about that. Uh, and then, so and then Gwen has a child, 
um, uh, named Guinevere, and she's like the daughter of like beauty and all this other stuff. Um, and then they they talk about a a Gwen's firstborn. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, yeah. And so they're they're saying it's fine. Uh, so they talk that Gwen apparently had a firstborn that they cast it out, and nobody knows who this is. They just like tell tales of a reason for this like guy being casted out. Um, mm-hmm. And then he also has a daughter uh, named Guinevere, who's the, uh, who's beauty and, and whatever. And they say that at some point, so this is where I think things get interesting. There's also a third child, and there's a lot of room. Like there's a lot of things of like, well, who is this third child? Was he casted out because like? Um, the firstborn was very much tied to the sun, and Guinevere was very much tied to beauty. And their third son, or sorry, the second the, the second child, the daughter, was tied to beauty and all that stuff. And then the third child was, was ugly boy. as shit. Now, <laughs> yeah, they say he was ugly as shit, and he, was, <laughs> he also refers to himself as a girl, and everybody else did as well, because he was had the affinity for the moon. And while he was born a boy... He was very and he feminine. was into dudes. I think he was, yeah, I think that w- what he was like. And so there's rumors that, oh, uh, he was casted out by Gwen. He, he was not accepted. And everybody treated him like a girl because he was. But if you look into more detail, it actually suggests that Gwen didn't know this third child. Because at some point, Gwen leaves on Orlando because the flames start dying out. And he wants to rekindle the flame, right, to keep power to the giants. Um, and they, they suggest that he might have been an illegitimate child of Gwen. He actually came after Gwen had left. And so he never knew his father. And he might have never known his daughter either who left or his other brother. Uh, and so there's that connection that I think that's pretty interesting. And, yeah, he's, he's ugly. He's got, like, tentacles and stuff. And, yeah, he's very much uh, a part of, like, the moon and starts his own covenant called the Dark Moon uh, Covenant, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. It has its own, like, uh, uh, possibilities of stuff. Um, so there's a lot. I'm not going to – I'll stop it at there. But there's a lot of things, too, like the witch. Like, basically what happens is – the flames start to die out, and each um, the Witch of Isolith and Gwen each have their own way of dealing with this. Gwen tries to go back to the first flame, and he wants to rekindle this to make all the other flames more powerful. Uh, but when he does this, a lo- like a large explosion of fire happens, and um, I think traps him in there or something. And that's where these Dark Knights come from, really, really powerful dudes. And they actually used to be Silver Knights. But the reason why they're black is because they're charred. They were around there when that explosion happened. And they weren't even supposed to be there. Gwen didn't want followers, and they decided to follow them anyway. Um, so that's why they, like, roam the land. There's a couple of them spread out. And then the Witch of Isolith is experimenting with, like, pyromancy and stuff. Well, d- demon mancy, I guess you would say. Um, and that has, has its own thing, and, his, and her daughters, and, like, daughter leaves... Um, I think this could be a separate topic of going even further, but the lore is really, really, yeah, really <clears throat> good. Um, yeah, the lore so is great. Of this. And none of this is explained. It's all found through dialogue or like chatting with people or picking up items, and, and the community has pieced this stuff together. Right. Um, and and I feel like the creators of this have done that on purpose. Like, yeah. hey, we just put these little hints in there and let the community create this. Or or put this together and think of like different little little fill in the gaps. I would say everybody you know? has to experience something different a little bit in the game. They can all piece it together to actually get the story. Yeah, but there's that's a cool. game coming out that's very similar to it that I think both of you should try out. It's called Neo. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about it yet. They just came out with a beta. Um, go ahead. It, I'm sorry. Is you... it from the same company? I believe it is. It's the same concept. It, and I don't know if it is the same company, but it's the same concept. But what's really cool is that, okay, so Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, all those are like medieval times, like castles, dragons, all this other stuff. Neo is all about, I believe it's Japanese background, samurai, like samurai right? warriors and stuff like right. that. Yeah, it's really cool. So um, oh, I tried N- the beta out. I O H. Yeah, it comes out in February. And, um, okay. It's a very it's same game tactics, um, you know, unforgiving. If the whole point about da- Dark Souls and Demon Souls and all those games is that if you die, you have the spot where you died. Okay, so the whole concept is you have these like little bonfires or places that you can get to, and it's like think about like almost like a checkpoint. You can teleport between them and all this stuff, but to get to another one, it's kind of a lengthy process, and there's a lot of fucking dudes in between them. So you're going through the spot. 
and you're you get there and you're killing things and you have a bunch of souls and you're like holy shit i haven't gotten to the spot yet before so i can go a little bit further i'm risking dying yeah. And if I die, I have to make it back to that spot to pick up my blood spot or whatever it is in that game. Different games have different things right now. You also can't pause the game. You can't pause it. You can't save it. I mean, it's constantly saving. Yeah. Yeah, but if you die, it's already instantly saving. Like, yeah. you can't just turn it off real quick and yeah. you'll be back. So if you die at the spot, you have to make it back there to pick up all your souls. And if you die on the way there, they're gone forever. Yeah, you and that's where you get pissed off. Like, you'll have, like, 100,000 souls, and you're like, oh. And it was something so stupid why you died. You're like, yeah. okay, I have to make it back there. And it's that Bro, time. That's that's EverQuest. Like, um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's exactly. Yeah, because you're running along. You're like, okay, I know this guy over here. Kill him. I, I'll go over here. I know this guy over here. Kill him. Boom. I fell off the fucking ledge. And you just sit there and stare at your screen. And it yeah. doesn't just say, oh, you oh, know, it, hurts. Back. it just says, you died. Yeah. Just in big letters. And you're like, I fucking hate you so much right now. <laughs> but it's your fault, right? Because you knew exactly what yeah. to expect. And you probably were just not patient. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Patience is one big thing that you need in the game, too. Yeah. So I think we, we, we beat this a little bit to death. Um, yeah. I think, Rocker, you should check it out. Uh, I am. I'm just making my stance reverse. I was. I was already thinking about it. I was thinking about. Uh, you know, since I'm gonna be picking up the Xbox Slim, I was just thinking maybe I'll pick up the Dark Souls like yes. on on oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So Dark Souls One just got backwards compatible for the Xbox. You can probably nice. get an Xbox 360 copy for very cheap. Mass Effect Three just got backwards compatible. Um, Skate Three just got backwards compatible. A ton of games backwards compatible now on the Xbox One. Uh, so think about. I it. think it'd be really cool that we all get one of these games and play together or yeah. like sit there and work together to figure it out totally I yeah think, i think when dark souls 3 how many it already people came can go, i know but how many people can go co-op um i think it's up to three okay because the fourth one i think it's four but the fourth one could be the invader someone okay. trying to kill you guys so if we were to play it would just have to be us three screw everyone else <laughs> okay you gotta get an xbox yeah. then xbox slim maybe you gotta get an xbox yeah. Yes. Xbox Slim. Think about bro. all the 360 games you can play immediately upon buying that console. Nope. Yeah. I am going to recruit Steven and Alan. You watch me. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll yeah, think about think, it. You should think about it. You should think about it. Um, all right. Let's move on to our next Hey, topic. wait, 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 wait. I got a quick question for you. So when I buy it, I should be buying 360 games instead of Xbox One games? If you want to save your money. I mean, you can, like, you can buy in Dark I mean, Souls. Is, it, is, is there not a difference in, like, graphics and all that and whatnot? I mean, well, uh, well, so Dark Souls, the original Dark Souls never came out for Xbox One. You could buy Dark oh, gotcha, Souls, gotcha. and it's backwards compatible. Gotcha. And so, yeah. you, like, b upon buying an Xbox One, you immediately have all like a ton of 360 games in your library yeah. in Xbox One games. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so know Red, that. Red Dead Redemption, Mass Effect One through Three. No way! That's they're already on my the console when I buy it. In, they're backwards compatible, so if you buy oh, that game you. or have that game, you can immediately play yeah. it. I gotcha. Conditioned <clears throat> to be like, no, you're not going to need a guide, you just need to press forward. And I didn't get that. As soon, so the guide opens me up to how you're supposed to do stuff. Then and things create things. Yeah. And but so, hold on a second, though. My question, my question is, is this: Then is it like, is it that difficult that you really can't figure figure yes. out that puzzle? It, yeah, that's it's what's not so even a puzzle. So, so is that so is that fair to like? I mean, I know it's not. No, a puzzle, no, no. It still is a puzzle. Like, it's still a problem that you got to. No, no. Of course. Like, so, this, yeah. so this was the yeah. connection that blew my mind because it's hard to it's a hard concept to grasp, Rocco, as you're doing right now. You're like, wait, hold on. So you're telling yeah, me? Yeah, I'm because, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right, because. It, and that's how this game is made. It's made in an age of community, and it knows this because they have messages that you can drop down that you're supposed uh, to read. Gotcha. On top of that, there's Reddits gotcha. and community forums and YouTube. Like they knew that this was going to be using social media. Spe it's yeah, specifically, it's supposed to be the, yeah for communication. Gotcha. And so, and if you have, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say go once on. once you. Re Our next topic is going to be my topic real quick. Rocco, how long do we have you? I'm on right now until um, I'm in a month. Okay, that was, <laughs> we, we, all right, we got you. <laughs> we got you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be here as long as I can. I don't know how long that is, to be honest. 
Uh, well, when does the game start? The game starts at 11, but I'm going to still try to stay uh, with you guys. Don't like, know. in and out. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, okay. Um, my work. topic is uh, Clay loves Dark Souls. Ooh, is okay. that simple? Um, I hated on this game for a little bit. <clears throat> oh yeah, you guys dogged me about it. I dog. Yeah, I think I did dog. I think in, I would hope that you got that in jest because here's the thing. Oh no, of course. Yeah. Okay, because like I definitely, I definitely have my problems. Like it, I like when I, okay, let's see. How do I? There's so much there. I've tried playing this game six times and rage pound for pound, and then uh, that was it. That's all it took. I started playing, and it was just awesome. It was. Super super fun. Uh, it was uh, it was. So what was the difference though? Like what 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 was the difference there for you with having a guide now versus you just going out there and doing it? Like the, what diff was the, difference? the difference was. I've never played the game though with that coming in mind too. Right, so and and that's I've the problem, and that's what. And so they, explain and it to the viewers who haven't played that either. Right, and so he, here's the thing that I realized is that when I've ever talked to someone, they're like, "No, Dark Souls is great, blah blah blah. I did this, I did that." I was like, "Well, how did far did you get? Oh, I got this. You gotta get this, blah blah." I was like, "Well, that's crazy." And like, and I was like, "You did this, you?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, it's so easy. I beat this, blah blah." I'm like, "Okay, fine." When people don't tell you, is that they're actually looking at guides too and going on YouTube uh, and finding people and oh, talking yeah. to people, but no one says that, or no one even has ever suggested that I well, do that. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%, but what I do is I play it, and if I get stuck at a spot, I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. And I'll go to my computer, I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. And then you get past it, and then you go on and go on. And now the fairness of the game that you, you had mentioned is a great thing. So all games and everything that we always play, you sit there and you play a character or you're, you're someone or something that you could sit there and you shoot something or you hit something twice and it's dead, but you get hit 50 fucking times and you're still alive and you s escape somehow. This game is extremely fair. You pretty much have the same amount of life as the person you're about to, or the mob you're about to fight. And you could instantly die, like, out of nowhere. And there's tricks and, and a lot of games, like, if you're running along a ledge, you can't fall off because the whole game just says, hey, there's a wall, an invisible wall here. No, this game's like, hey, don't go near that fucking ledge or you're going to fall off. <laughs> and then on, on top of that, too, though, like, again, we're used to, I'm used to games that, like, you you don't go to the guides. Like, we've been quit all the times. And so that <laughs> led me to the, to the thing where I recognize people really like this game. And I recognize that people really think that this game is great and that it's for them. And I came to the conclusion that this game was not good for me. And I came to the conclusion that I felt like this was, like, some shoddy... Games like I felt like they were just trying to be difficult for the sake of difficult. Although I heard plenty of people be like, "No, nah, man, you just gotta learn how it's done, and then it feels really fair." And I was like, "I guess." And I was like, "I just, man, I just this game's not for me. I don't have time to sit there and grind and die over and over and over again. I just don't. Well, uh, I have a life. I have a wife. I have a. Yeah. I have a baby. Like I just, I, I can't make this work. And then uh, after like a seventh and eighth time rage quitting. I was watching Game Grumps play Dark Souls three, and I was like, "This just looks like a fun game. He's making it look easy. <laughs> if I can make, if I can do it like they're doing it easy, then I will play this game." So I picked up Dark Souls one more time, and I decided I was just gonna follow a guide, a YouTube yeah. guide. And 